Hello, uh, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will talk about uh, the difference between a Blazor server application and a Blazor WebSMB application. Uh, we will look how these two different type of application works. We will look out their advantages and uh, disadvantages as well as we will go through their project layout in Visual Studio and uh, we will look at the differences between uh, the files which get created as well as we will look into the important files and code so that we can uh, grasp the differences between these type of applications okay so first what is a, a blazor so a blazor is it's a new framework that is uh, created in order to build an interactive client side web application that also uses c sharp programming language okay so uh, the beauty of uh, this framework is that the developer if he doesn't know any javascript still he can use uh, c sharp the blazor syntax and other uh, CSS to build a complete interactive client side web, uh, web application. Okay. Now, another advantage which this uh, Blazor framework provides is that the user can leverage the existing .NET uh, framework core libraries as well as its tooling in order to build a very good uh, client side application. Okay. Now, uh, using this uh, Blazor framework, user can create two different type of application. The first one is Blazor server application, which executes on the server, and the second one is a Blazor WebAssembly application that executes in the uh, in the client's browser. Okay, so uh, let let us have a look uh, into these type of application. The first one is a Blazor server, as its name suggests. This type of application executes on the server as an ASP.NET Core application. Okay, and uh, all the Razor components uh, they are served uh, to the Client's browser using HTML pages. Okay, now if user perform any operation on uh, the browser, the request is sent back to the server. The server executes, perform all the operation, and it sends back the response to the uh, browser using uh, the Signal R technology. Now all the interaction between the browser and the server happens using this Signal R. Okay. Now, uh, what are the advantages of uh, server application? The first one is that uh, the application executes on the server as an ASP.NET Core application. Now, because of this, uh, the user have access to all the .NET Core APIs as well as all the .NET uh, tooling capabilities, which will help him to create a wonderful uh, web application. Okay. Now, uh, the second one is that uh, the server only serves the HTML and JavaScript files. Okay, none of the .NET uh, code base is served uh, to the browser. Okay, now uh, another one is that the download size of this type of applications are pretty small. That is in compared to a web assembly application, as the whole uh, application is not served at once. Only the required uh, requested pages are only served. Okay, now uh, another advantage of a server application is that. It can be executed on any browser. It has a very uh, thin client uh, support. It does not require any special requirement uh, the browser must have. Okay. Now, uh, what are the disadvantages of uh, server application? Now, uh, one of the major disadvantage is that every interaction which the user uh, performs, it always requires a trip to the server. The, the execution logic is present on the server so like for example if uh, the user clicks on a button the handler the logic is on the server so the request goes to the server it gets executed over there and the response come back to the server so uh, because of this if the connection is lost between the server the whole application stops working okay now another uh, thing is that uh, handling of multiple user is quite challenging right now uh, so uh, it's the responsibility of uh, the developer to maintain this client connection and as well as various uh, client states okay now uh, since uh, this is a server application so asp.net core is required uh, in order to execute this type of application now uh, because of this the deployment is uh, you know the server uh, less deployment is currently not now, if you go to a server, uh, sorry, Blazor web application, 
Now this type of application it execute completely within the client's browser. So what exactly happens is that the whole application is downloaded into the uh, client's browser and uh, uh, all the interaction between uh, happens right over there. So there is no need of server in case of uh, Blazor Web Assembly. Okay, so it's like executing a native application. Okay, so uh, what are the advantages of a Web Assembly application? The first one is that uh, since this application completely is uh, it's completely downloaded on the browser on the client side, so it gives almost native like uh, performance native app like performance like for example if you want to build a game so that would be uh, a perfect uh, app uh, for web assembly in order to execute on the browser okay the second one is that uh, the application it does not require the server in order to perform any of its operation because whole of the application itself is downloaded on the browser and the application is fully functional and uh, the another one another great advantage is that it does not require any asp.net uh, web server in order to execute the application so uh, it becomes very easy to distribute uh, using cdn as the whole application can be packaged and deployed on any of the browser okay now uh, what are the disadvantages of this type of application the first one is that the application in order to execute for the first time uh, it has it takes long time because the whole application need to be downloaded first and then it gets executed now if the size of the application is quite large it will take a long time okay now uh, the another disadvantage is that the application is restricted as per uh, browser capabilities as well as browser uh, restrictions like for example uh, one of the restrictions which I can talk about here is the uh, if you are executing any application on browser it cannot have access to whole drives and it cannot access any of the files on the server so there is this type of uh, um, restrictions okay now uh, another uh, disadvantage is that uh, the browser it needs to support uh, WebAssembly this is a new uh, standard uh, in order to uh, execute application which are WebAssembly capable. Basically, it's a new bytecode uh, using which any programming language can be converted into this type of uh, WebAssembly bytecode which the browser executes natively. Okay. Now, uh, currently, uh, the debug debugging capabilities are also limited and uh, uh, in case of uh, server, every uh, .NET tooling capability is available, but here, in case of web assembly as it, the whole application executes on the browser the deb debugging is not as mature as uh, we have on the server side okay uh, now let us go to visual studio and uh, check out the differences between the project layout uh, between these two types of application so what i have done is i have already created uh, these two type of application here on the left hand side we are having this blazor uh, app server and on the right hand side we are having a uh, blazor web assembly application so uh, let us uh, look at the differences between them the first one if we go on the blazor uh, web uh, web assembly application here we can see in the dependencies folder we are having an extra node called packages now if, if we expand this we can see that we are having uh, additional packages like uh, asp microsoft asp net core component that is WebAssembly, WebAssembly.build and dev server, as well as we are having uh, JSON package as well as uh, here. But in case of uh, server, we don't find this package. Okay. The next major difference is inside this WW uh, root folder. If we come here and if we check uh, here, we can see that we are having a file called index.html. Now, in case of server, this file is not present okay now uh, we will look more detail uh, detail look into this index.html but first let have a layout differences uh, the second uh, difference is that inside the server application we are having this uh, data folder where we are having two different file one is weather forecast and one is weather forecast server so uh, this file is not present uh, 
uh, in the WebSMD application. Instead, we are having a folder called sample data where this weather.json file is present. Okay, now, uh, now another major difference is inside this pages folder. Now here if you look, we are having this index, fetch data, counter, and here we are having those uh, file as well. But here we are having this additional underscore host.chtml file as well as index.razor component, okay, which is not present on the WebSMD. Now, uh, if we move down, we can see that uh, we are having this app setting development.json as well as app settings.json uh, configuration file on the server side, whereas uh, on the WebSMD side, these files are not present. Okay, now another major difference between WebAssembly and uh, Bla Bla uh, Blazor server app is that there is no startup file within WebAssembly. Okay, there is only one file called program.cs. Okay, now let's do one thing. Let's go to this uh, WebAssembly file first and uh, inside this HTML, uh, index.html file, we see one of the major difference uh, what it has is that it has a reference to this JavaScript file called framework blazor.webassembly.js file. Now this uh, JS file, what it does, it, it basically downloads the complete application as well as it references the uh, WebAssembly file in the browser itself, okay? So this is that major uh, JavaScript file which does everything. And uh, as well as it initiates uh, um, the application so that it can execute okay now the same thing if you go to uh, the server application uh, the whole uh, this uh, code is present inside this host.chtml file and here we can see that uh, this file is having a reference to this framework uh, underscore framework blazor server.js file okay now this is the file which uh, initiates uh, uh, the application uh, so that it can execute okay now uh, let me just come back to this now another major uh, application uh, difference is within this program file and if we come to the startup file in this one now here on the server side we are having this startup.cs where we can configure all the services okay and as well as we can define all the uh, endpoints of the routing mechanism here okay now this thing is not present in uh, the WebAssembly application. If you come here, we can see that this thing is present in the program.cs as well. Uh, here, uh, the root class, that is the app class, is it's uh, configured here as well as we build all the services right in uh, the program.cs, whereas this thing is done in the startup.cs in the server file in the server application okay uh, now let us execute this application and see how they get loaded into the browser okay so first i'm going to execute uh, this blazor server application okay so this thing is loaded so i'll just hit f12 to bring the debugger console and i'll just hit control f5 and this many files are uh, loaded uh, in case of server, okay? Now this is the uh, JavaScript file which we saw in the host.chtml file. So these are the files which get loaded and it took almost 534 millisecond in order to execute, okay? Now uh, likewise what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this Blazor Web Apps Assembly application. And here we can see it's loading. It's uh, getting downloaded this is exactly the same application UI uh, so I'll just hit F12 and I'll just refresh it so that everything gets loaded once again so here we can see that uh, uh, this many files are getting loaded and it took almost 740 milliseconds uh, to load this complete application okay so let me bring this side by side Okay, now here we can see the differences. 
so these are the additional files which get loaded it is because the whole uh, application gets loaded into the browser and in case of uh, server application only the required files uh, which current UI is representing uh, on the browser gets loaded okay so uh, these are the major differences uh, between a blazor server application and a blazor web assembly application so i hope you find uh, this video helpful thank you for watching have a great day